Hey everyone, Jerry from Llama Index here, and today I'll be giving you an introduction to report generation. So if we think about a basic RAG pipeline, the output uh, application is typically just a simple chatbot. Um, but the issue with the simple chatbot is that it's typically not very useful for your end users. So a simple RAG uh, pipeline can typically only handle very simple questions and output very simple responses. Um, and so when you translate that into an end user experience, this means that the user is basically treating this tool as a simple search and retrieval tool. And it also means that um, they're basically the knowledge worker who's using this tool is responsible for translating the output of that tool into the knowledge work that they're responsible for producing. So this mean, the, the agent uh, that's powering this RAG pipeline is not directly producing the output that the knowledge worker is responsible for, and at best is just like a simple lookup tool, almost like an internal Google search or something like that uh, for the existing user. And so what this means is that uh, in this like kind of naive or basic RAG setting, uh, we're still requiring humans to do most of the knowledge work and therefore not really saving them that much time. Uh, we think there's basically limited time savings or limited decision-making enhancement in giving the end user like a basic search and retrieval tool and that the potential for Gen AI or agentic applications in general is that you should be able to actually do things that actually automate entire chunks of what the knowledge worker is able to produce, therefore actually letting them be, you know, not just like one or 2% more efficient, but like 10, 50, even like two to 300% more efficient. And so the question we ask ourselves is, how do we automate more decision-making and actually create uh, knowledge powered agents that can you know, produce reliable, consistent outputs for the end users and therefore make them uh, basically supercharged. They can do a lot more things in a shorter amount of time. The answer to this is of course, something around agents. Um, and so there's a lot of hype around building agentic applications these days, especially with state-of-the-art models getting better and better at multi-step reasoning. Um, we think that you know, knowledge assistant agents should have the capability to not only generate just simple chatbot responses, but also produce entire uh, units of knowledge work, for instance, producing like an entire PDF or slide deck for you, or taking actions. And so this means that instead of the human having to go into, for instance, like a, like a document editor, like Google Docs or Microsoft Word, or having to click a few buttons in a UI, um, the agent should increasingly be able to do this for the user and therefore allow them to automate a lot of rote or routine tasks. And so we think that this overall pattern of going more towards multi-step reasoning, action taking and output generation can potentially lead to much greater ROI in terms of time savings and capability improvements. Some of the top use cases that we see include, uh, you know, report generation, data analysis and action taking. And for the purposes of this video, we'll talk about report generation just as a very broad concept. We think that report generation is a very natural next step for any sort of agentic RAG application or adding an agentic layer on top of an existing RAG pipeline. And it turns out it's also one of the top enterprise agent use cases that we see among our users and customers within our community. Um, so anywhere from banking, uh, finance, to consulting, to legal, to tech, to manufacturing and other industries, we actually see a lot of common patterns around, you know, oftentimes a uh, company will start with building a very basic or simple RAG pipeline, but then they'll generalize beyond that once they get some of the basics down, you know, they're able to index a bank of unstructured data and start generating simple QA over that data. The next step is typically, instead of just you know, giving back or giving the user a simple search tool, actually starting to synthesize insights in a more end-to-end -end fashion and basically producing entire outputs for the knowledge worker. As we mentioned, report generation is a pretty broad category. Um, and the overall idea is that you can also call this artifact generation, generating like an artifact or a unit of output for the end user. Um, and so some sub patterns that we see um, include generating, for instance, like an entire research report or presentation. So for instance, generating like a survey paper over uh, existing documents or generating an entire slide deck where, you know, maybe instead of, uh, in addition to actually figuring out the content, you also have to figure out the structure and the overall layout. Um, other use cases include filling out an example form or questionnaire. 
Um, this is typically pretty common um, in many kind of routine tasks where you have some existing bank of context and you want to use that to actually fill out, you know, it could be anything from a tax form uh, to like a due diligence uh, questionnaire. There's some sort of input template that defines what uh, are the specific sections that the worker needs to fill out. And you basically need to leverage both your prior knowledge as well as existing uh, company specific context to fill that out. Um, this also includes more tabular settings, like being able to fill out an entire Excel sheet um, and potentially doing that end to end from an existing bank of context. So instead of, you know, an analyst uh, directly opening up Microsoft Excel and filling in every single value based on, say, reading only like 10K reports, uh, an agent can do this automatically end to end. We also see this in emerging examples and existing tools that everybody uses. So, you know, ChatGPT uh, recently released this, this feature called Canvas. Um, so OpenAI has this Canvas feature where for everyone using ChatGPT, you know, you typically use it in like a simple uh, a chat, user chat, get back response format. Um, but the Canvas uh, tool is basically a layer on top of it where instead of just generating, again, like a chatbot response, it gives you an entire output or report that you can continue to interact with, edit, and um, uh, refine. Um, and you can basically go into specific sections, for instance, here, um, and actually give feedback on very specific sections. And you basically collaborate with the AI to generate this entire unit of output. And this is pretty much an example of report generation. It's very clear that, I mean, I'm sure OpenAI and Anthropic have also worked with a lot of enterprise customers that have these exact use cases. Um, Claude has had this as well. You know, I'm a heavy user of Claude. And if you just look at, for instance, um, some of the recent updates, you're able to, it basically is very eager, especially with the new Sonnet models in generating um, entire outputs for you, whether it's writing like a markdown report or writing code, and you can continue to select and work with it to edit and refine different sections. Um, we focus on now th these next sections a little bit less, but this also exists in code, for instance, like if, you, if you're a cursor user, um, you know, you can basically generate entire units of code and actually have the right UX to basically uh, directly refactor uh, your existing code directly in your editor. Um, and there's basically some back and forth interactions between what the AI generates and how it plugs into your existing workflow. So we'll talk about some of this in future videos too, but you know, there's some core components of a report generation architecture. And today we'll go over some just very basic building blocks of what a report generation architecture looks like. Um, and then in subsequent videos, we'll go over some tutorials and how do you actually leverage some of these components to build both like basic to slightly more advanced report generation workflows. The first concept is structured outputs. And structured outputs is basically a foundational concept for anyone trying to build or develop with LLMs and build applications. Um, it's basically the idea that instead of prompting the LLM to output something that's an unformatted output, prompt it to output something that's more structured in nature. And so something that follows a certain predefined schema. And this is important because if you think about most versions of reports or artifacts, they basically require you to adhere to some structure, um, whether it is something that's super explicit, like filling in uh, you know, every single cell in an Excel sheet, or you know, being able to uh, generate even like a markdown report, there will be like a heading, um, different sections. There might be like interleaving text tables and images. Um, and so, if you look at this example right here, this is just a very simple schema that defines uh, what a sample report output could look like. There's a top level report output class, and underneath it, there's uh, text blocks and also image blocks. And basically, a report output can contain interleaving text and image blocks. And this is just one of the examples we'll go over in, in one of the subsequent tutorials. And the result is that you're able to generate this entire output with uh, text sections, and then there's images in the middle, and then more text after that. Um, and there's other versions of this, of course, but uh, uh, fundamentally, you know, you want to be able to prompt the LLM probably through like function calling capabilities or through regular text prompts to basically output something that's in a structured format. Number two is having a knowledge base. Um, and so, you know, most instances of enterprise uh, ready report generation require you to have an awareness of private context. 
Um, and so to, to basically be able to access this context, you basically need to create some sort of search or Google-like interface into the knowledge base to allow any sort of agent to look up relevant information from this knowledge base. Um, and so there's different ways, you know, Llama Index, of course, has a ton of tools uh, across both Llama Cloud and the open source to help you index a bank of multimodal data and retrieve from it. Um, but basically, um, we help, we'll show you in subsequent videos how you load in a bunch of unstructured documents and define a, a different set of like retrieval endpoints on top of it so that when you're building like a report generation agent, one of the steps is typically research. And this research step can call the retrieval endpoints to pull and look up the correct context to look up the information that you then feed into the rest of the agent loop. The third is building or defining some sort of multi-agent workflow. And so a multi-agent workflow um, is something that you can build using our core abstraction within the open source framework. It's called Llama Index Workflows. And this allows you or gives you a very flexible agent primitive to orchestrate um, you know, any sort of agentic steps in an event-driven manner. And this will allow you to build something like this type of flow where you're able to break this overall report generation task into independent agent steps. For instance, having like a researcher plus a writer, and then having every step solve that task before moving on to the next one. And then uh, another uh, piece here is template parsing. So if you think about what the inputs to a report generation task are, you know, it could be through natural language. For instance, if you go to ChatGPT, you can just say something like, oh, please generate this short story for me or generate like a research report um, just in a very simple manner. But besides just parsing an explicit natural language user task, oftentimes, and this is something that we've also discovered through conversations with customers, that they, you want to input almost like an existing document template. Um, and this template basically is the input that forms, uh, that defines the overall structure of, you know, what is the report that you want to generate. For instance, if you input like a questionnaire, then the output, of course, needs to be a set of answers uh, that, that actually answer every question in the questionnaire. If it's like a template or, you know, just a class instructions, for instance, you need to generate a report that actually adheres to the guidelines um, that this template um, that this template defines. So, or it could be an Excel sheet, like a blank Excel sheet. And of course, then you need to fill in the cells of this Excel sheet. So it's a pretty important step and it will start baking this into some of the later tutorials. There's many other components too. Um, and you know, this again is just the core set of building blocks that we believe are important to actually help users build you know, some sort of report generation uh, agents. In the end, we, uh, something that is production ready will, uh, will likely require very custom components that are likely more advanced than some of the core things that we show you here. But the last step that we'll talk about is just human in the loop. And um, this is something that increasingly as workflows are more agentic, and automate more and more steps, then there's, um, there, there's a lot of value in letting the human actually inspect what's going on and give feedback in both an implicit and explicit manner at every step of this multi-agent workflow. So implicit feedback would be, for instance, giving back some natural language unstructured input back to the agent. And the agent then ha uh, can have the freedom to actually translate that feedback into certain steps that it will take, um, you know, to, to basically try to take the human feedback into account. Explicit feedback is direct. The human actually injects, you know, direct control over either the agent decision making or over the generated output. So for instance, it can say, you know, please throw away this information and actually have a toggle. And then it's not an LLM figuring out, you know, what to do. It's actually just directly throwing away this, this information um, in, in the control flow of the program. Um, it could also mean the user directly injects an edit into the output report. And this doesn't mean that it's up for interpretation. The human literally directly edits the report. And then the AI just has to take that into account. And so this requires some sort of back and forth interaction that you can model through something um, like an orchestration framework like Llama Index Workflows. And we'll show you some initial examples of this uh, towards some of our later videos. So in some of the subsequent videos, um, the stack will typically consist of Llama Index Workflows. So as I mentioned, it's a core agent orchestration framework that's very flexible. Um, it will leverage some of the pre-builds that we have in the framework 
but fundamentally basically lets you define any sort of uh, event-driven agentic workflows over your data and gives you the ability to step through it, debug it, and inspect what's going on. There's also uh, some of the videos will take advantage of Llama Cloud, which is, is, which is our enterprise end-to-end -end advanced RAG platform. Um, it'll let you easily connect a set of data sources and give you a set of persistent indexes that you can query. And then some of the, uh, some of the use cases will also use uh, Llama Parse. And so Llama Parse is our state-of-the-art advanced document parser, really, really good at text tables and images. It's a part of Llama Cloud, but it's actually available for everybody to sign up and start using today. You get a thousand free credits per day, um, and then you also can uh, upgrade to the premium plan if you want more. And so the set of tutorials will use these free components. Um, and here is just a general list of resources to, to get started and also start building our workflows. Um, if you don't want to wait for some of our future videos to come up, we basically just linked a core set of Jupyter Notebooks that you can directly start using. Um, and some of these, you know, again, uh, are based on Llama Parse. Some of these are based on Llama Cloud, uh, but they basically uh, showcase different examples of report generation. So that's it. Thank you all. And so if you want to sign up for a Llama Cloud, just scan this QR code right here. Again, you get immediate access to Llama Parse, and then the overall Llama Cloud platform will be uh, is, is currently in a waitlist state. And then if you're an enterprise looking to build enterprise grade RAG and agents, uh, please get in touch on the QR code at the left. So thanks and see you, see you all next time.